What's going on everybody? It's your boy Caesar with Caesar Gets Crypto and we are looking at Bitcoin today. Um, if the video is a little glitchy, lagging behind, don't worry. Um, just like the camera feed itself. I, I'm in an unconventional place. The Wi-Fi is not that good, but it shouldn't mess with the, uh, the audio and it shouldn't mess with what you're seeing on the screen other than the video itself. Without any further ado, happy 4th of July everybody and let's get into some TA. We're sitting on a rooftop right now. Alright, so looking at Bitcoin, you know, it hasn't done a whole lot. Yeah, we had a red day, and yes, I'm, I'm expecting that we go down, but I'm not, I'm not going to start celebrating now. Um, there's a lot that has to happen in order for my move to be validated. I say my move, but Bitcoin's move to the downside. Um, I am expecting us to see some, oops, some sort of an M here, right? Um, but a failed M is what I'm thinking. We're, we're going to have a higher low M. Which isn't conventional, but I think I think we might be seeing something like that. It might not even be an M. This could just be like a topping range, like a, a damn it, like you know, like this here. This is your Bart, and then you come down. You know, that's and you come down fast, but then you, you can get swallowed back up quick too. So um, there's not a whole lot of volume coming into the past couple days, coming into the past like almost a week now. Looking at it on the four hour, if we're looking at the RSI. Oops, sorry. Let's see. Let's see here. There we go. Looking at the RSI, we are struggling to get above the 50. Technically, we're above it now. It depends, you know, if this if this green uh, if this candle closes green, you get above the 50. That that could be a good sign. That could mean that you are in fact going higher than this high right here. Um, but if this candle closes red, which you have an hour and 10 minutes to do. And it doesn't even have to close red, actually. If it closes just a little bit below where it is, this could be a rejection off the 50 zone. Where we found support last time, we had a nice move up. We, if we find rejection off of it, I would expect that we would see a nice move down. And again, a nice move for Bitcoin. It's, it, it's been boring lately, man. From, from this relative low to this high, 4%. Even from this low over here, that's a 6% move. So it's not, you know, if we see something dramatic on this chart, a 6% move, like, that would be dramatic. So I don't think that we're going to see any like crazy, crazy moves yet. Um, we're getting there. We're probably getting there where we're going to break out of this range, whether it's to the top or to the downside. I do think that we're going to break down personally. That's my expectation. Um, but you know that could, that could that, that stands to be uh, proven. That stands that stands to be tested. I don't know what what to say. <laughs> on the daily man, again, there's there's really just nothing that's going on. Um, we do have bearish divergence. On the RSI, we were in the overbought zone. We came out of it. We came back into it, and then only for a day, and then we, we rejected it again. So this this to me is not uh, well. It's not it's not foreboding like good things. You know, I, I would think that that this means that we are going to go lower, at least on a daily perspective from the RSI. And again, to the tune of something. I mean, from from top to bottom, I would expect to see a move that's anywhere eight eight point two percent to like fourteen percent. It could be bigger, it could be smaller. Um, as of right now, we have a 6.4% drop all in all, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we came down, honestly, like if we came around to this purple line here, 10, 10 to 14% drop, something like that. It's kind of what I'm leaning toward, especially with this rejection out of the overbought zone. Um, it's kind of exactly what I was expecting, honestly. Like, I, I didn't think that this move would be sustained, it wouldn't last, you know, on the four hour, again, we go back down. We're not building volume as we're coming up. The most volume we've seen on this range was actually this big downside one, and you know that that didn't bear any fruit for the bears either. But there's just not a whole lot going on, and that volume it might seem like a lot, but again, you know we had more volume over here. It's not. It was a single spike, which is a lot, but but the histogram itself was at lower readings than we were receiving over here. So, anyways, um, we're not experiencing significant volume yet, so I, I do expect that we're going to be in this range for a little bit more, maybe a day or so, maybe a week or so. I, I doubt that it would be more than a week, but I do think. I actually do think that within the week we would see resolution. Let's see, this week's only, yeah, we're only two days in. We got about five days left. I would, I would expect that we see some kind of drawback this week, um, you know, to the tune of anywhere from the 382 to the 618. The 382 is at $28,700. 618's at $27,100. Um, there, that would make sense to me. Or even the uh, 382 or the 618 on this FIB as well. Which similar similar kind of areas, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yet to be seen. So far, not a good start to the week, but you know, there's it's still an early week. There's still a lot that can happen. I mean, 
it doesn't take much for this thing to turn bullish. You know, start start closing above here, start getting some daily highs that close more, get back into this overbought zone. If we get back into the overbought zone, I'll, I'll be convinced that, uh, that we are about to make another stride higher, probably up to 34K, 37K, something like that. But if we don't, which I, I don't think we will, if we, if we don't get back in this overbought zone, in fact, if we go lower, especially if we get out of the 60 zone, we reject this area, um, I would expect that, that that low side is going to come. I don't know if we're going to break below the 50 on the RSI. We'll have to see. But a move down to the purple line, I don't think that would break the 50. So we might, we might be in an area where we get a classic kind of cool off, come back to the 50, show strength, and start our, ne start our next leg up. That's kind of what I'm uh, expecting at the moment, but, you know, again, I feel like this video just kind of sounds like more of the same of what I've been saying for the past, like, I don't know, how, how many days now? How many days is this? It's like, you know, 10 days. <laughs> maybe, I mean, I've been bearish now for about like five days or six days, maybe about a week, but nothing's changed. We've got some weaker readings, in my opinion, on the RSI. It's, it's not giving up strength so easily, but it is showing weaker signals. You're getting diverging RSI readings from your price, and that's that's not a good thing. This definitely does look like a BART. If we pull it up on the four hour again, man, just just looking at the price, right, like this. For those of you who weren't here, let's go, let's go right here. We're gonna type in BART pattern, and we're just gonna go to <clears throat> Google Images, okay? If it'll load. Um, you know, like, look at that guy. Does that not bear some resemblance to what we're seeing here? This guy right here. This is, you know, this is the one that I referred to earlier. Does that, does that look familiar to anybody? You know what I mean? Am I, am I talking to myself? I don't know. Maybe. Barts, man. They happen. They happen in times of low volume, which we're experiencing. They happen in times of uncertainty, and they happen in times of manipulation, which... We could be experiencing all of them, and manipulation ma manipulation really isn't real, anyways. I mean, to a certain degree, it is, but that's more with like the media and like false information. Manipulation on a price basis—that's just people buying and selling, man. That's that's it's natural. It's not like someone putting in a shit ton of money to sell and make the price go lower. Well, they're just selling a bunch of Bitcoin, and it makes the price go lower. That's not manipulation. That's just a heavy bag being sold, and vice versa for buying. Anyways, anyways, guys. I do think we go lower. On the four hour, I do think that we get below this purple line. That'll probably be a good buying time. We are well above the 50 here. We're above the 50 on the uh, daily as well. So if, and it really wouldn't surprise me, I think I said this on another video of mine, if we went slightly below this purple line here, that would probably be a very key buying area. Very, I, I'm, I would expect that, you know, just as it was here, just as this below the purple line was a very key buying area. I missed it. I didn't see it that time. We were above the 50, so I should have, you know, I, I kind of went against myself on that. I remember even saying that. I went against my own indicator. Um, but, and it's not my own indicator. So it's a long-term RSI. The, I, it's not my indicator. It's just I've realized how this long-term RSI reacts with this 123 MA. And it's it's pretty simple. It can be more complicated. You know, there's more to it than just this. But, but quite simply, again, if you are above the purple line and the RSI is above the 50, generally anytime you go below the purple line, while the RSI is still above the 50, it's a good time to buy. Vice versa for selling. If you're below the purple line, but you come above it, and the RSI is below the 50, it'd be a good time to sell. Um, again, good time to buy here, above the 50. If we went you know, over here, you're below the 50, and your, your price went above it anytime you sold above this purple line. Would have been a great time to sell. Um, you know, Very good. Anyways, I think we're going to get something like that. I think we're going to move down, probably below it, not too far below it. I don't know if we'll mo move as far below it as this did here, but something more something more like this um we might not even get to it but but i do think we're going lower from here so i'm just beating around the bush just saying that a bunch of times um i got nothing new really man i don't i don't know i don't know what else to talk about as far as indicators go we could go to the fear and greed index um let's see crypto fear and greed index let's just see what that's doing oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we're experiencing greed. You know, some of the highest levels of greed actually that we've experienced in a long time. If we go to the uh, one year, look at how high. You know, we're in, we're in very extreme areas of greed um, for for the last year. We're not we're not in extreme areas of greed. I, I want to get that clear. Actually, we're, we're not in extreme areas. We're in slight areas of greed, but it's the it's some of the highest readings we've seen in the last year. And 
I mean, to be fair, we're at some of the highest prices that we've been in the last year, too, so I guess that's appropriate. But with the sparish divergence forming, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not too... I'm not too convinced that we go up from here. I think we do have a little pullback, and again, I'm just I'm repeating myself. So with that, uh, that's all I got, everybody. Have a great night. Happy 4th. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to see more, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye for now.